went to Tyler School of Art in 19, I think I graduated in 1966. The heart of the 60s, I was in art school. I mean, first of all, I didn't know what graphic design was when I went to college because I'd never heard of it before. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it was referred to as commercial art, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be a painter, and I didn't know I wanted to be a graphic designer until I took a course in graphic design in my third year and realized I enjoyed it and, and liked solving problems. But also, at the same time, um, I was protesting a Vietnam War, and then we thought we could change the world. So I formed some attitudes that I think in a funny way served me very well because my expectation is that you don't have to accept the status quo, that you can create revolutions, that you can change things, that you expect change as, as part of your daily experience. At the beginning of be, learning to be a designer at CBS Records when I could do those 100 to 150 covers a year and 90% of them were bad, that was great. You know, because, because you could learn what bad was and how it got that way. Sometimes there's a failure that's bad, but it's not as bad as everybody thinks. Like there's something in it that you, that you look at and think, oh, if I had done a little more of this and that, I'm going to try that next time and really push it in a different direction, and sometimes that works. The biggest problem I have is that as a professional, I'm hired by clients to help them achieve their goals so that the notion of being highly experimental in these situations is not neither practical nor necessarily responsible. It doesn't mean that the work is bad. It means that it's not necessarily a breakthrough. The craft may be very good and it may be timely and very appropriate to the time, but I find that I do my more experimental work for some not-for-profit organization where I had a carte blanche situation and then the things that I learned from it may be popularized and other people actually do it better. That's the R&D part of work, and you don't get to do it that often. It's great when you can. It's hard to make breakthroughs. Environmental design was great for me because I didn't understand what I was doing initially, and I was in a couple of situations that were really rather, what I would say, magical. One of them was um, doing New 42nd Street with an architect named Charles Platt, where we, we just got along wonderfully and had a good time inventing this building. And another was doing lettering on the outside of the New Jersey Performing Arts Center where I really wasn't working with an architect at all, just somebody was trying to convert the school quickly for not much money. And the third one was working with Jim Polshek on Symphony Space, which ultimately got changed. But he sort of had developed an awning that was like a, a, a background for me to do typography. They were sort of radical because nobody was doing that. The first ones were inventive, and they were also inexpensive and with goofy materials. And, the, and then later, they became much more refined, and they became, they became solemn. And then I had, done, I had done these small map paintings, and they were jokes. They were mostly like acerbic illustrations. There, there was some expression in them, so I one day just painted the world and put every city in it, and you know, sort of being arrogant and controlling my own information, because you can decide what you put on the map. It informed my design to a degree because I rebelled against it when I came back to designing after doing the maps. I got much more spare. You have to have a sense of who you are in it and hold on to it. So sometimes you make change and people don't like the change you've made. Sometimes you make change and people are responsive to it or think it's terrific. I mean, it can go, it can go either way, but you have to have a, a clear view of yourself in it.